Time to talk about batting and attacking play in particular. Three of the modern greats, Kevin Peterson, Ricky Ponting and Adam Gilchrist. Gilly, starting with you. Yeah, I guess I think back to it, how it all began, the, the basic foundation that my father, who was sort of the biggest influence on my career at, at a young age, how he used to coach me, or I used to nag him, keep throwing balls, keep feeding them into the machine. But he gave me a, a strong foundation of learning the, the basic fundamentals. So you needed a base to work from. Uh, be it physically or just in your mind, a, a basic technique of forward defence, back defence. And I used to do a lot of those drills, but Dad always at the end, at, at the finish of the net session, would say, right, now you've done that, I'm going to throw something at just slog it, hit the ball. It's what the game's about. You've got to, you just, that's what mm. the fun part of it. That's why we play. When so. you talk about base, you're talking about the stance, the, the width of the oh, stance? Probably more a, a, a base to work from, that you, you're confident that... You know, if a good ball comes, and, and I guess the big point, and I think that everyone would agree here, you learn your own technique. I mean, I grew up, and I think most of us grew up with all the calling all cricketers textbook, and that's what you sort of had in your mind. But eventually, you work out your own technique. Look, look at Hanscom, look at Smith at the moment. You, you're not going to find those techniques anywhere in a textbook. But really, I was joking about just getting a nice, balanced foundation so that then when the ball, if you get a good ball, you've got a good, tight defence to try and keep it out, or back foot nice tight, but then from there, it's an extension. Your aggressive stroke play is an extension of that base. So, as I say, I mean, I can show you the drills that Dad used to have me doing. If you just get some tennis balls there, pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, so just a, a session would be just simple underarm balls. And so you, you're doing all your basic drills. You might work on top hand drills to get some strength in that upper arm. and. Uh, it might be, you know, back foot as well, just getting the position. But as I say, he'd finish a session, you'd do all that, and you'd feel compact, and then it was just hit the ball, just... Oh, sorry, mate. But uh, just about... Nice just shot. having that extension of your base and, and having some fun, because there's no better feeling than, you know, going for a shot, mm. feeling it out of the middle. That's, as I say, why we play the game. So, so that, that was the basic sort of foundation that I worked from. I suppose the other thing that people ask me about being aggressive and, and getting bat speed was my grip. And people often used to say, did I purposely hold the bat you know, up high to get better leverage and better extension through the ball? No, that's like your technique, that's just what was comfortable for me. Mm. You know, Ricky was down lower, mm -hmm. KP high, much so. Yeah. so you know, I, I just, that's just where it felt comfortable for me. So I guess the key point is, <coughs> from my perspective, was get a good foundation of a defence, learn the defence, the attack, attacking strokes will be an extension of that, but learn your technique and learn what's comfortable for you. Kev, uh, the, the base pretty similar? Absolutely right. I mean, I was a bit uh, wider just because I'm a bit taller, so I wanted to try and get that level level eye line on it but I think the key to my batting was also I echo exactly what Gilly says was the ability to play a good solid defensive shot and I think when you can defend and you can defend straight and you're comfortable defending then you know that the bowler's best ball you can manage. If you can manage the bowler's best ball then you have the confidence to try and start improving on that and accelerating through your stroke play. Now I busted my arm I got it I got I, <coughs> excuse me pins and plates in my arm when I was uh, 11 years of age, that stopped me playing rugby. But what it helped me do is it helped me to play hockey. I played a lot of squash, I played a lot of tennis. And a lot of people talk about the way that uh, some players step across their stumps and they hit the ball across their stumps or that switch hit and playing the reverse sweep. I found it actually quite comfortable, quite easy to play because all the switch hit is, is, is it's a backhand squash shot. So you're running around a squash court, it's a backhand. It's a backhand. It's a backhand tennis. I mean, the top spinner or the more the back spinner. So for me, it wasn't a difficult shot. It was a controlled shot. It was controlled aggression, but it was all about manipulating the field. Mm. And that's what people say against Muralitharin, against Warney, um, against the Aussies in 10, <coughs> 11. Once you beat the left arm spinner from around, he had come over the wicket. And what do you do when he comes over the wicket is he bowls into the rough. When you bowl into the rough, you set a six, three leg side field. You have the slip in place. You might have a backward point. You might not, or you might have a sweeper on the boundary. One fielder, two fielder. So if you block off my whole leg side, you cannot get me out of LBW. I'm going to get my pad in the way. And then it's just an easy shot to accumulate runs and also just basically try and get the bowler to go back Can you show us a few field. of those shots? Absolutely. So it's all about defeating the bowler. It's about defeating the captain as well. 
And once you've defeated them from over the, around the wicket, you're hitting them through the extra car, you flick in, you're doing whatever you need to do, the bowler thinks, right, defensive mode is to go over here. Now, all it really is, is a backhanded <sighs> shot. And that's a safe shot. That might look like a risk, but when a bowler goes around the wicket, backward point generally isn't up. They might not have a backward point, or backward point might be on the boundary. So any top edge is two, three, four. Remember going to 100 in... India and in uh, Sri Lanka with exactly that same shot. There was no fielder there. The bowler was around the 6 three, And there really is no risk. That's not out because it's pitched outside leg stump. So there really isn't any risk if you miss the ball and you get your pads in the way. But you can just hit the ball and you can just manipulate the field. And then the captain thinks, this isn't working. I've got to do something with my field. He maybe take one man from that side. And then you can play, start playing the power shots again. So for me, I was always 4-3-2-1 in scoring. I always looked for a boundary first oh, oh, and then went down. Yeah, and it must be an amazing test of the mindset and strength of mind to be taking that risk, changing <clears throat> the game of test cricket with innovation. You know, I think everyone associates those sort of shots to short version cricket, don't yeah. they, to open up scoring Test rates, cricket but... was easier, was better. Yeah. Because test cricket, you, you could pack a leg side field. In one day cricket, you can't pack a leg side field. Yeah. And also the, with the wicket spinning a lot more, they think it becomes more of an attacking uh, mm. option. But you can see there, one ball hit me here, it's going to hit the stumps, but it's pitched outside yeah. leg, yeah. so yeah. it's not out. And the calculated risk you're talking about there is <coughs> if you're batting here with rough outside the leg stump, if yeah. you come down and try and hit the ball that way to the leg Miss side from out of the rough, yeah. that's a bigger risk than, than, just playing what, with a spin. than yeah. what doing that is. Yeah. Rick, you, that we, we talk about all the shots, all the different tricks that uh, these guys brought to the game. What about the mindset? You know, what's the mind like when you're trying to be ultra-aggressive? Well, batting for me was all about scoring runs. Mm -hmm. and, and it was showing that positive intent and putting the pressure back on the bowler to get them to bowl where I wanted them to bowl. Mm -hmm. That's, that was basically my batting mantra from the start. So, uh, look, I did nothing different than anybody else. Gilly talked about the grip. My, my grip was a little bit lower on the bat because I probably wasn't as big and as physically strong and I wanted to make sure I felt like I had complete control of the blade. Um, my stance was pretty, pretty normal, just probably shoulder width apart. And if anything, my front foot was always a little bit more open to mid on because my natural move was to go forward and, and across my stumps to try and get into the, the ball and get on, into the bowl as quick as I could and show the bowler that I was coming after him. I wanted to get at him. So that was my, my natural movement was down that way. And if you look at a lot of time when I was batting well, I'd, I'd take my stance, I'd look up, and the first thing I'd do, I'd always, always look at a spot on the pitch. And that spot on the well, pitch so, for me... So as soon as you take a guard, you're in your stance, the first thing you look at is... I always look down there. How big is it? I, I used to visualise like an A4 piece of paper on an, on an area where... Whereabouts? Where are you looking? What? Well, it was normally a few, a few... And it changed for different bowlers as well. Obviously, the height of the bowler... Talking here? Dictated that, that, yeah, probably a little bit further. A little bit, yeah, about there. And so, so what I'd visualise as being a forward defence length. So basically what I was saying to the bowler was, if you're good enough to hit that, that's going to be a defensive shot for me. But with my intent and what I'm trying to do to you, I'm trying to make, by, by coming forward, I'm trying to make you bowl short of that. If you land the ball short of that, I think I can pull you from that length. Mm. And also by visualising that area there, if you pitched up on the full side of it, the way I was going at the ball, I felt I could get forward and drive the ball back down the ground. Mm. So what I was trying to do was, minimise the bowler's margin for error, if you like. And if you look at my career, my, my two strong shots probably were punching back down the ground to mid on and hitting a, a good pull shot off balls that weren't overly short. Mm. But it was all about that, that intent that I had. I wanted to get into a, a contest with the bowler and let him know that he was going to have to bowl really well to try and restrict the way that I played and the way that I scored. And, you know, if, if first ball I got in a test match was a half volley, then I'd play it the same way as I would if I was 100 not out. You know, I wanted to get in and get on and put pressure back on the bowlers as early as I could. And as a number three batsman as well, that, that could set a tone for the rest of the, the, rest of the team yeah. and the rest of the day uh, if yeah. I played well. So, you know, regardless of the situation that I went in or what, what situation the team was in, I tried to play the same way every time. I mean, we've spoken about, you know, bat lifts and, and kind of wide bases, <laughs> uh, the mentality of going out there to look to score. But I know you did a, a, a master class before and talked about the head position. And, and my key to my bind was getting that head towards the ball. As soon as it went over to the offside, I was in big trouble. Yeah. And we talk a lot about, you know, getting a wide stance and, and getting kind of at the ball and getting a good stride in. Mm. I've always felt that batting's about the head, <coughs> about Correct. getting that head back towards the ball. Yep, absolutely right. And uh, 
as you can see with Joe Root at the moment, I think he might be a little bit worried with um, the short ball, and so he's going searching for something that's actually not really there, and that's why he's falling over a bit. And the reason he's falling over is because his head. It's not because of his feet. It's got nothing to do with his feet. The heaviest part of your body is your head, so if your head goes in a certain direction, your feet have to go in that direction. If your head's going at the ball, your feet are going at the ball, and you're quite right. Well, I'll just I'll show you something with that with Kev. If we talk about because this obviously was something that I battled my whole career mm. was being a little bit eager to get to the ball yeah. and, and maybe not yeah. going in the, the the exact same position all the time. Quite often my head will go towards mid off rather than towards mid on. And then to work to to just show us there, Rick. Well, if Kev can take his stance there, what I would say to anyone that, that battles that problem there of falling over their stumps is, if I was teaching a kid that was falling over, what I'd tell him to do, I'd tell him to see the ball from this eye, from his right eye. If quite often when you take your stance, you're looking, at, you're looking out of your left eye. You never really get your eyes square enough to, to where the ball is coming from. So if you're falling over your stumps, see the ball from this eye here, and, if, and where you can, when you start to move, take that eye towards the umpire. Yeah, even, see, even, and that's, that's very, even, yeah. even stay leg side of the ball. Yeah. I mean, once you're leg side of the ball, you can actually make a move into the line if you want. But once you've actually moved across early, you can't go back the other way, which is what <clears throat> Joe's doing right now. So little things like that. And mm. the other thing with, with young kids as well, which we're hopefully this program's going to, the one thing you can notice with a kid when his head's and his eyes not level is the peak on his hat or his helmet. Yeah. You know, it's always on an angle like that when your eyes aren't level. So if there's anyone that's coaching these young kids, just get them to straighten that, the peak of their helmet up, and that gives them a better chance of taking their, their it's head so true. towards so, the ball. So, so true, because I remember playing in some test matches saying, look at mid-on, look at mid-on, look at mid-on, to try and keep my head this side of the ball, especially when somebody fast was bowling. Because you stay this side of the ball, it's easier to, to duck and sway and watch the ball. As soon as you get this side of the ball, all the commentators, he's not watching the ball. He's, it's hard to watch the ball when your head is tilted in this direction. If yeah. you're in this direction, you can play both ways. If your head's here, you literally ducking, balls are going past you, you're getting this way, you're turning your head, and it's so true. And so that's true. the heaviest part of your body, isn't it? Yep. So your whole weight whole body's transference gonna is going to be coming down that way when Absolutely, you're yeah. trying to be upright, level-headed. Yeah. All right, let, let, we, 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 like that's test cricket. What about T20 cricket? Well, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> you were pretty good, mate. <laughs> ask what, what, what are we looking at in T20 cricket? What do players need now? <laughs> yeah, you need, need a tee box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what, change, what changes in your technique well, that I'll, you've just told us about? Well, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll jump in because usually, well, in all my T20 cricket, I open the batting. So for me, it was pretty much no change of my mindset or technique. The field was up, a la one day cricket. Um, mm. Brand new ball, so a couple of field restrictions, power play. So for me, there was, there was plenty of gaps yeah. to hit. I didn't have to sort of think I've got to go aerial to try and hit sixes. Just, just my same mindset. So nice and positive uh, frame of mind. And, and a lot of people ask me, just jumping back to test cricket, about the mindset around the, the Perth 100, Ashes 100, mm. um, of 50 odd balls. In the first innings, that, that for me was mindset. First innings, I got out Monty Panasar, I just prop forward, really negative in mind, inside edge, caught for a duck. And I remember walking off thinking, if I get the chance of facing Monty again, if I'm going to get caught, I, I'm going to get caught on the fence. <laughs> and, and I got out there, I managed to get into the innings and he came on and it was just much more aggressive. So it's not so much, you know, the end result of hitting sixes, but it's aggression in, aggression in the feet, getting down, getting out of your crease, being prepared to take that risk, whereas if you're negative and proper, you're going to get out. Well, that's that's a, really, a really good point you make there, because as soon as you are looking to score and looking to hit the ball, all your movements speed up. Because you're actually trying to get into a position early where you can actually strike the ball. But if you're mm -hmm. looking to defend only, all your movements are slow, because you're not looking to move anywhere, you're just looking to do this and defend. That, that, you never get yourself in a good position to play a shot. The dismissal of Steve Smith, Overton's first test wicket, that's exactly... He, he's just on the move, the ball hits his pad, if he's more aggressive with that leg movement, it hits his pad, thuds there, goes down, not out, outside mm. the line. Mm. But he's Lazy. just on the move, it hits his pad, goes to the inside edge, chops it onto the stump. So it's, mm. yeah, we're... A, 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 just, a, little, a little bit of something on T20 yeah. cricket. T20 cricket is exactly the same as test cricket, exactly the same as one day cricket. You just give yourself less time to get yourself in. You see, your mindset, for me personally, is absolutely 100% like I did in test match cricket. What I did in test match cricket, I tried to get myself to 10 runs before I started taking advantage. I tried. <laughs> I tried. I really did try. It didn't mean that my intent wasn't there to get to those 10 runs in two Are balls. Are you 
just said it to mid on and go, yes! Yeah, well, exactly right. So there was intent. That's the intent, to score. I was always looking to score. But in T20 cricket, doesn't matter where I come in, I bat three, one, two or three, it's always ten balls. But also, the intent to walk out there, and I have a laugh with some players, said, you've got to walk yourself in. And while you're walking in, you get yourself out. And I know I speak a lot to these guys when I walk out to bat in Australia. And it's quite refreshing because you can talk about what you want to do and you can say, well, you've actually got to deliver this now um, because this is what you're talking about. But it's all about the intent to score. And having captained in T20 cricket, you understand how fragile bowlers are. And when you've captained a team and you go and play in another team and you bat, you know that a bowler is so scared about the guy whacking him. He's so scared of going for runs. So the position of strength in a T20 game is all with the batsman. So I walk out to bat, I say, right, I'm going to give myself 10 balls. In those 10 balls, because of my reputation and because of the way that I've played, I will get three four balls. I get three four balls, which means of 10, if I block the rest, I'm off 12 if I get to those 10, those 10 deliveries. And that's the mindset that I walk out to bat with in uh, T20 uh, OK, um, how do we teach oh. the modern player, the, the, the young kids, the, the boys and girls out there now that are mm. just starting out to play the game, how do we teach them how to play the modern game? What I like to teach young kids these days is almost the reverse of what Gilly was taught by his father. I, I t tell kids now about finding a way to hit the ball as hard as you can, but hit it along the ground right from the start. Learn that first, learn how to strike the ball first, and then we can build a little defence around that. If you look at the modern players, I think most of them that are good these days have done that. David Warner, Stephen Smith, have all come in as flamboyant stroke players that have and then ended up building a defence around it. But also when you're teaching kids, you've got to give them some fun to have. Like Gilly <coughs> said, he got his fun at the end of his session. I like to tell, tell kids, I mean, you see kids playing short version cricket now, the first thing they do is they go out and they try and whack it up in the air and try and hit sixes. Mm. They're actually learning nothing. Mm. But let, why don't we teach them to hit good hard shots along the ground, give them less chance of getting out. They bat for longer periods of time, they walk off enjoying themselves. Interestingly enough, I was doing some coaching in Sydney last week and I walked in there and there was a little kid, he's 14 years of age, he's got two hundreds already, and he, exactly right, 14 years of age. And uh, the guy said, Dad said, oh, can you come and have a look at my son? So I was like, oh, cool. So the coach was there, who was there. So I threw him three balls, he went crunch, crunch, crunch. And um, the coach said to me, he said, yeah, what about his, I mean, his, his left arm is a bit stiff. He said, don't you think it's a bit stiff? And I turned to the coach and I said, dude, I said, I don't know who this bloke is. I know his dad. He's just come in here. He's crunched an off draft, crunched one straight down the wicket, flicked one off his pads. I said, there's nothing wrong with his technique. I think there's too much talk about technique. It's about finding your way, and it's about making sure that this thing that we've all talked about goes at the ball. If you're defending off the back foot, it's at the ball. If you're off the front foot, it's at the ball. Look to score. Use this thing. Don't worry about these. They go. All right, all three of you. We've talked about technique, we've talked about the modern game. Mm. <clears throat> Fearlessness. How do you give a kid that chance to go out there and not worry about getting out? Because everyone, no one wants to get out. And there's always that little gremlin in the back of your mind saying, oh, if I dance down and play the aggressive stroke, I may get out. How do we teach kids to kind of clear that out of the mind? Yeah, well, I think, again, it goes back to what that they've both just said. It's about letting kids experience the joy of, of creaming it. Of, of you know, mm. just the fun of, of you know, running down, going, in your mind, you're right, I'm going to go aerial. <coughs> and you swing the bat, and just for that split second, you nail it out of the middle, and you're the only person in the whole world that knows that you've got it. And you're just going, you beauty, this is why I play that. So if they can experience that early, that, that'll be enough uh, incentive for them to stay in the game, to keep wanting to do that and replicating that. And then they'll try and carry that into a match. And yes, they are going to... That, 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 they're going to get challenged, they're going to get out, but a bit like I was saying to Kev, he brings that type of game to test cricket. You uh, were criticised, uh, you were challenged, but you've just got to be strong of that mind and, and trust that on the back of being free scoring, you've got a base foundation for the good ball like we've spoken about. I don't think you can teach it. I, I don't think you can teach it. I think it comes from the confidence within. The more successful you get, the more patient you're going to get with your failure, the more you're going to accept failure and the more that you're going to understand that failure happens because you've also achieved some good stuff. I do not think for one stretch of the imagination I can take that bloke there with that uh, bucket head on and teach him how to be fearless. I don't think I can. You've got to do it yourself. You've got, you've got two choices, haven't you? You train two or three times a week to be ready to play on game day. Mm. So if you're going to get confidence out of anything, you've got to try and get something from the way that you train. Mm. So if you think on the weekend you're going to be playing a spinner, and you want to be able to use your feet, then you've got to do that all week of training, right? Yeah. Give yourself a chance. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the one thing I was saying. But the other thing I'd say to the kids is just see the positive outcome. 
<clears throat> don't see the negative yeah. outcome of getting out. Like, if, if you're visualising the night before your game that you're running down and going to hit a spinner, don't think you're going to go around, run down and get stumped. Oh, that's visualize hard. Your, visualize <laughs> I've done round. that. Done that plenty. Visualise <laughs> yourself yeah, running down there and playing the perfect shot. Like, give yourself half a chance. If, if it can't be taught, then that's one way they can yeah. at least... Right, to finish off, <laughs> give, give us your best uh, Ashes moment in terms of attacking play. Kev? Uh, Which image would you say? It has to be 2005, that final day in 2005, because that spell of Brett Lee after lunch was pure instinct. It had nothing to do with technique, had nothing to do with power, nothing to do with talent. It was technique. He, it was either him or me. It was a six-a-thon, and I could have got out any ball. Ricky? Um, well, this might sound funny because we're batting for a draw, but I think the intent that I showed with my batting in Old Trafford, in t Old Trafford 2005 in tough conditions, I, I stuck mm. to my actual game plan right the way through that day. St still managed to score quite freely, um, but never got outside of m my natural instinct. So that was the one for me. Gilly, but you've already mentioned Perth. Is, is that another uh, one, 2006? I guess so. I, I, in an Ashes, first innings of an Ashes test in Brisbane, a few years before, got out for a duck. Uh, so second innings went in there and again, you know, you dreaded pair, but again, it just managed to trigger myself and, and Ashley Giles was bowling. I thought, right, I've got to go big here. I'm, if I'm going to get out for a pair, I'm going to get caught on the fence and manage to get away with a six. So again, it, it, it's like Kev talks about the oval. You know, could have been out any boy. He got dropped, but he kept backing himself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the key thing. So, yeah. Well, uh, talking of drops, uh, Gilly, uh, mine was 2005 when I got 160-odd. I think uh, you helped me out on about 40 with a... Your right hand didn't quite grab hold of that edge we've, behind. We've done the wicket-keeping masterclass before. <laughs> right? we, don't, we don't need to talk about the keeping. <laughs> Our worst day in test cricket. <laughs> well, anyway, Kev, about it, mate. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you've, you've, yeah, you've given me a lift up there, Gilly. Thank you. Uh, Gilly, uh, Ricky, Kev, thanks so much for that. Three of the best. Hope you've enjoyed that.